Welcome back to the Music Marketing Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how you can be networking in the music industry. So we thought we'd talk about kind of networking with industry professionals, but also networking with like-minded musicians. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the one that everyone kind of wants to hear about is networking with industry professionals. But I feel like we first of all need to talk about the like-minded musicians because you can Mm. use some of those strategies to network with the big names as well, I think. Yeah. Um, I think the best platform for it is Instagram. Yeah, I do. It's a minefield, though. There's a lot of musicians out there who are kind of just like fronting and just dollar bills everywhere. And it's kind of like, it's a bit lame and they're just like not proper musicians. But when you do find the right people, the good thing about social media is that it really outs people and just how they are in themselves because you get a feel for what their objectives are and what they're trying to achieve. Mm. And if someone is just obsessed with their music and obsessed with their success, you can see that straight away before you even have to contact them. Mm. So I think following people, engaging with their content and eventually DMing them is a great way. I know I've seen uh, when on the Burstmo Instagram account, we're a lot more likely to engage in someone with in conversation if they DM us and they've been engaging with us previously. Yeah. Someone constantly liking our content, constantly creating conversations in the comment section of our posts, and then they DM us, they're more likely to get taken yeah, seriously because you recognize them. Yeah, we know them by name, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we know there are multiple name. people that we know by name, and if they ever have a question, we will answer it straight away mm-hmm. just because... We know they're actually fans of our content and they want to engage in a conversation rather than taking. And I think that's kind of the most important thing. When Mm. you go about networking, whoever it's with, whether that's an industry professional or a musician, you need to go in with kind of giving something back to them. Mm -hmm. Because if you immediately start a conversation with taking, Mm. you're just going to annoy them. And there are so many takers Mm -hmm. that you'll just become part of the crowd. You want to stand out and you can stand out by adding value to the other person. That's how we've done it. That's how we've got to know other yeah. agencies, how we've got to know other industry professionals. We try to add value to them, engage in conversation with them. That's actually like mm. a, a real yeah. per- a personal connection rather well, than just asking. Yeah, what I used to do was like, if I wanted to get to know someone, I would give them like a tip. So obviously I do more marketing and marketing for musicians and I, I'm from a marketing background. So if I wanted to know someone, I would always feed them like a tip, just something that like is different and they've never heard before so wild example if you if you go onto the personal website and you inquire you get redirected to one of our blog posts that is something for you that helps seo it helps us on the google rankings and i would go out to someone and say by the way i've been trying this new tip and this is what i've been doing and i found that we come up on google for music pr music promotion all the things that we want to come up for because of this one tip and people engage with that and they come back because you've added value Mm -hmm. you've created something for them so whether it's something to do with your music how you play your instruments how you do your production the software or your marketing by just figuring out one little gem that you can give to people gives you a really good opener Mm -hmm. i think no matter what your aim is with networking with similar musicians like-minded musicians you need to use hashtags i think that is one of the best ways to find another artist but you can so easily tell if someone's like fake yeah. because you can type in, I don't know, hashtag producer. You go onto their profile and they've got 100,000 followers and mm. zero engagement. Mm. I think that's a really important thing to look at initially. If you want to yeah. engage with someone that has a similar mindset to you, a similar drive, and you go onto their account and they've got no engagement and they've bought followers, there's no point engaging in a conversation yeah. with them because it's yeah. fake anyway. And on the flip side of that, you've got your own content. Mm -hmm. And I know we go on all, every podcast is about content, but it's Mm -hmm. because it's so important for these reasons. Mm -hmm. So you, someone discovers you and then they go from a hashtag and they go onto your profile and you're not taking that seriously. You don't Mm -hmm. post a lot and you can't, there's no insight into you and who you are and your objectives. Mm -hmm. People aren't going to engage with that. I think the best way to start a conversation with someone, say you want to just make friends with people that have a similar drive, similar passion to you, which I think is a really big deal because... Mm. As a musician, you can feel quite lonely because other people don't understand your vision. True. It's like that in anything you do. If you are passionate about it and you don't have friends that aren't also passionate about it, it can be quite difficult. Mm. So finding musicians that are similar to you, have a similar drive, just jump straight into their DMs. If you really like their content, you really like their music and you want to build a relationship, jump into the DMs, but not with either a direct question or um, a take. I would Mm. suggest like mentioning something personal about their feed because then they know it's not copy and paste. 
because the worst thing is getting a copy and paste from an artist that's just like stream my track like mm-hmm. it just doesn't work well what would you suggest is the first thing you should say um in terms of dming people on instagram yeah i'd say the first preview is incredibly important yeah because the first few words is what they're going to see so you've got to think what's in it for them what would make you open it and if you start and and fill the first few words with hi the person's name i am from and yeah. it's like oh I, I know where this is going he's going to try and plug my track mm-hmm. out his track and it's just boring so you need to have something that's going to grab them in those early stages and just even if you like cut out a few words but just get the sentence mm-hmm. in and make it about them yeah and make it yeah. obvious it's about them then that's yeah, what i would do you could literally go to someone's profile right now that you really want to build a relationship with they have a picture of a dog mm-hmm. stop dm with capitals love your dog and then go into what you want to say. Yeah. And they know that you've actually taken the time to look at their profile, engage with them, and you, you're you kind of, the reason for it is mm. real and it's not just asking for something. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, another thing that a lot of people ask about kind of networking is um, doing networking to start collaborations. Yeah. Do you approach that in a different way? Uh, I'd say so because you have to be in the right position. Mm -hmm. You have to have music out there and you have to have something you can offer them. It's either you've got an audience and a fan base to offer them Mm -hmm. or you've got money. Mm -hmm. It's one of the two. You've always got to have something you can offer them. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that I get uh, invited onto podcasts which have next to no audience. They're just getting started. But if they can offer me studio space where I can create content for the social media, they are still offering me value. They are mm-hmm. offering me the opportunity to create more content for the social media by spending a day in a studio. We don't have a studio here at Burst We're literally in our sofa room. The office is through there and that's all we've got. Mm-hmm. But if you've got a studio, then they are offering me value. So mm-hmm. you've got to think out the bo- side the box on what you are offering people. Yeah, I think there are two ways that kind of collaborations can come, maybe three. Mm. Three ways that collaborations can happen. A, a friendship. You become mm. really good friends with someone and then you're like, let's do something together, which happens often. If you look at some of the biggest artists that are doing collabs at the moment, they're just really good friends um, and they want to create content mm-hmm. together. B, you can pay them, which I would suggest doing if you have the budget, especially if it's a major name because it can blow you up. C, you add value, like you yeah. said. So that value could be something as simple as you will produce their track for free. Yeah. And I know that is probably killing a few of you right now hearing those words, do it for free. But do you want the exposure or do you want the money kind of weigh it up see which one you'd prefer um and that doesn't have to be just producers it could be that there's someone and your voice is amazing and you can offer your voice for free if you can add value in some way that is networking and that is building collaboration opportunities Mm. um and i think it's definitely worth worth a shot yeah i mean there's something you um reminded me about earlier when you said to kind of you mentioned like loneliness and the difficulty in mm. in finding other people and when we first started burst and we speak about this a lot with musicians as well we talked about it i got this story from a book called buddhism without the beliefs where i talked about the path that you are on mm-hmm. and you said that it's very difficult to meet people who are similar minded to you. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason for that is because you have gone into the wilderness of like trying to find people that are quite rare. Someone who's decided not to take the nine to five route through life. You've got to find people who have, have decided to veer off into and leave this path. So if you imagine there is a path walking through the woods, and you as a musician have decided that you are going to leave that path and walk through the woods. And I think it's a great analogy. And the reason for that is it just fits so well. So for example, you leave the path, which is safe. You see other people on it. People are passing you by. You meet people who are saying, yeah, this definitely goes to a place because it's a path, right? A path always has to have a place that it goes to. Mm -hmm. Leave the path. You have to step over logs, there's danger, there's bears that could eat you, and it's a risk, and it takes, it's a slower progress, because you look back at that path, and you can still see the people on that path who are looking at you being like, why is this guy like walking through the forest, and putting himself 
through this and they question you and they shout at you saying why are you a musician why are you bothering with this why don't you just get a job like the rest of us mm -hmm. and the great thing about it is that once you're deep in the woods and the reason i brought this story is up because it mentions that you meet people along the way mm -hmm. in the forest mm -hmm. that are also like-minded and have taken that same risk and you together will discover things that those people on that path will never discover and you will find destinations that are amazing that people on that path won't discover. So Deep. that's, yeah, but that's why I wanted to bring that up because people get stressed about not being able to find like-minded people that feel alone mm -hmm. in this kind of music world, especially if you're just kind of in your bedroom, you're an introvert, mm -hmm. but there is, there is always other people out there. It's just harder to find and your progress will always be slow. Yeah, I also do think that sometimes when you get to a certain point, you do need to sort of evaluate the people around you because if you are very serious yeah. about your music career and the people you're surrounded by are lazy, they yeah. work a nine to five job and they're happy with that and they don't care about your music career, they don't want to talk about it, they mm -hmm. think that you are wasting your time, yeah. that negative energy around you will drag you down. It will bring you yeah. to a point where you're like, yeah, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And you'll just end up being like one of them. And that's not the point. You, you want to be surrounded by people that have a similar drive, and that mm -hmm. doesn't need to be music always, but it can help. Yeah. But having people that understand your vision, and I think that's why networking is is amazing. And yeah. you can find pages on Instagram. Ask, for example, if you look at the followers, they're all going to be artists. Yeah. So you can find people that have the same aims as you. That's very true, actually. Like, in our comment section, we very rarely see other people commenting on other people's it's topics. more often recently and I'm okay. loving it because yeah. I'm noticing that people are like, if we don't reply to a question immediately, someone else will mm -hmm. reply to it. And I love that because yeah. that's the best way to network. Yeah, you've got one thing in common that you both follow that this account for some mm -hmm. reason. You could literally start a conversation from that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be our account. You could follow Adam Ivey. Yeah. And you could, you Take could it say, to the DMs. Yeah, you could say, I noticed you follow Adam Ivey. Did you watch his video on this? I love that. Have you put that strategy into place yet? Mm -hmm. I've been trying. What have it? Like, it just creating conversation because mm -hmm. how I picture networking is imagine you're in a club and someone approaches you cold and mm -hmm. asks for something. They go up to you and go, Can you buy me a drink? You'd be like, What? Yeah. No, bye. Leave me alone, you creep. And it's the same with network. If, some, if someone came up to you in the club and went, I really like your dress. Where did you buy that from? Mm. People start a conversation. And it's yeah. the same with networking. If you ask a question, if you engage in a conversation, instead of just taking, mm -hmm. you're more likely to build relationships. Um, Instagram, as we're saying, amazing for it. Yep. There's the DMs, there's the comments, there's hashtags. Another great place for it is Facebook because Facebook are really, really pushing groups at the moment. Yeah, more so than usual. Now, they've Facebook, if you don't know, have stopped the organic reach of pages. So mm -hmm. it's about 3% of your audience, if you have a Facebook page, will see your organic posts. They're now going for more of a community feel and they want to push more groups onto your timeline and that's to get you more engaged because pages were just basically, well, they were spamming. going to shit. Yeah, yeah. It, spamming memes, they don't want that. Exactly, yeah. So now they want people in groups just communicating with people and there are so many groups. We've got a music marketing group. If you want to join it, it's called... The Music Marketing Group. The Music Marketing Original. Group. Yeah, <laughs> search for it. Or oh, there's lots of other music groups you can just go and get involved in. Mm -hmm. I think that that one's a great one because you could literally put in about like networking events or you could put in a question you might have and then you can easily start a conversation. You could add the person on Facebook. You could mm. you just start conversations and there's also groups specifically to areas in the world. Yeah. So if you're an artist in New York, you could literally type in New York Music and you'll find different music groups based yeah. on that area and that's fantastic because you can actually meet people like mm. meeting face to face is probably one of your best shots at having like a genuine relationship with someone mm. what i love about social media and groups and things like that is like i said I, it came to mind while you were talking i was thinking what about gigs and shows and things like that and it does work but if someone came up to you at your gig and said, I'm a musician as well, let's talk. You've got nothing behind you. You don't know if the music is good. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about this person. Social media, it's mm -hmm. like it's all out there. Yeah. And it's such a great place. Of course, gigs is possible, but maybe DM them before you go saying, by the way, do you want to have yeah. a chat? So it's kind of cross between the two. Also, it's a bit scary. Like you're going into an event, like a gig mm -hmm. by yourself with the aim to network. Because I think something like a gig, people are there to enjoy the music. Yeah. And if you go with the aim to network, it can sort of be a little bit uncomfortable for the other person because 
unlike a networking event where they're there to meet people, a gig you are there to enjoy the music. So mm-hmm. I think if you know who's going to be there, you've reached out to them before, I think that's a great idea. But if you're going with the aim to network and you're kind of just like going to turn up and just bombard these people, I wouldn't really suggest it. But um, yeah. one of the other ones I was thinking about, I don't know your thoughts on this. What about Reddit? Reddit, I think, is a good one, uh, especially we on the music makers. It's a good one for producers to be able to collaborate, ask questions, and just get something going, get yeah. involved in the community. If you have, again, if you have a good conversation with someone, take it to the DMs, and you've got one thing in common, you both like Reddit, and mm-hmm. you ended up there for some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form. Yeah, I think that's a good one, because um, for those of you that don't know Reddit, the usernames don't really match your name ever. Yeah, it's all anonymous. Um, it's anonymous stuff. Yeah. So if you really feel like you've engaged with someone on that platform, you can go onto their message, you can speak to them, you can send them your Instagram. I'd suggest that's probably the best move. Mm-hmm. Um, or your Facebook. And you can engage further on there. But Reddit's amazing as well because it's a bit similar to Facebook groups where you can find different subreddits that are suitable for uh, a specific theme. So just music in general, mm. uh, your genre, your area, um music videos anything like that there's mm. there's literally a subreddit for everything um mm. but so we've done like the, yeah. the artists themselves mm-hmm. finding like minor musicians should we talk about like meeting industry people yeah this so, is networking events let's be honest like it's, yeah, a, it's a scary yeah. term but and i have been to so many networking events in my time in the music industry and i don't think i've enjoyed a single one of them uh they, for, if you've never been to a music industry networking event, they are brutal. So I used to go mm-hmm. to a lot of networking events and the, what would happen was you'd have, you'd walk in, everyone there is an artist, emerging artists, zero streams. Like mm-hmm. everyone is just waiting for the opportunity. I think, why, why is there no kind of industry professionals here? And you look at the panel and just to name a few, the panel was the music supervisor for Breaking Bad. Great guy. He gave an amazing speech about how he pick the music for Breaking Bad, which mm-hmm. is quite interesting, actually. One of the things he said was, when he was picking the music, mm-hmm. he didn't choose music that suited what was going on in the scene. He chose the music to what was going on in Walt's head. Mm-hmm. And if you watch it back, yeah. you will yeah. get, like, goofy music going on. It was, quite like, a serious... such a opposite to what was happening in the scene quite exactly, a lot. Exactly, yeah. Amazing. So watch it back. Yeah. Really interesting. And then I, there was the music supervisor for... Uh, I think it was Universal Studios, and he did like... Made in Chelsea all... as well, did you say? It was yeah, one it was them? Made in Chelsea, yeah, Andrea from Made in Chelsea, and things like that, and they were great speeches and great panels, and I looked around me, and it was artists clutching their CD, rocking backwards and forwards, waiting for the speeches mm-hmm. to be finished, and then as soon as the speech was finished, and, and the discussion was over, everyone piled to the front to try and give them the CD. They hadn't listened to a word they had to say and they just piled to the front. Mm -hmm. So networking events, again, I think you need to audit people on social media Mm -hmm. and find out those right people. Put in the groups. I think a lot of them are are organized through Eventbrite and you can find those people on Facebook or or there is a discussion board. Say anyone want to meet for a coffee beforehand Mm -hmm. and you can meet people and go in with them as a team because you already ordered them and you know that they are the type of people who are there for the right reasons and to meet people. And if you're part of a big group, and you seem to know a lot of people, you will attract the attention of the industry professionals. You're someone who knows everyone in the room. You went in there, you knew five people already. Then you met maybe another five people because you challenged yourself to get social. Mm -hmm. And then you have that energy to go up to to one of those people at Universal Studios Mm -hmm. or the Made in Chelsea music curator and talk to them. But someone just holding a CD and added no value to the room, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm Um, yeah, what what I think is really good is um, people like Able, Ditto, they have events running monthly every three months um, and you can find the event page on Facebook and you can literally look mm-hmm. at the people that have clicked maybe, who have yeah. clicked interested, who have clicked going, look at their name, put it into LinkedIn, see who they are, yeah. read about them, memorize their face and then when you walk into that room and you start a conversation with them and they introduce themselves, you can be like, oh, Willie, really, is that your name? But you yeah. know their name. Yeah. You know what they do. And you've prepared for that moment in time. And yeah. I think that's the best way to do it because you actually know what to say to that person. Yeah. The worst thing is going up to someone. They say the job title and inside you're going, I don't have a clue what that job means. And you are basically just 
waiting for the moment where you can plug your music because yeah. you're never going to plug your music by talking about it like that mm-hmm. because they can't hear it for one and the amount of people that come up to them in these networking events and just plug their music mm-hmm. they're going to forget your conversation make it memorable yeah. so that could be just by knowing their job so well I think that's yeah. a great and idea and trust me influential people in the music industry are bombarded with yeah. music they are so like don't think that those 40,000 tracks that were uploaded to Spotify this week, none of them thought about sending it to someone. Yeah. They're all bombarded. You need to get in there some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. So I think the best way at networking events to think about it is, again, like, how can I add value to this person? Yeah. And that could be just having a conversation with them that isn't about the music. Yeah. Because when they leave that event, all they're going to remember is, Oh my God, that random guy threw a CD at my head. That random guy literally rugby tackled me to try and get my attention. But there was that really nice person that actually asked about my dog because they saw it on Instagram. That was like something like that that shows you're a genuine person and you want to know about them and you want to add value by just building a relationship is a lot more memorable. And say, for some reason, they give you their email address, they give you their number, then you're in and that's when you can send the music and that's where you can build a professional relationship. I got an amazing tip for a networking event once, which was go to the organizer and show up early and help them set up. Help them set up the chairs and mm-hmm. lay it out. Help them set, if there's a buffet, help them set that up and just like get involved, meet them. Don't get in their way. They're stressed to hell that no one's gonna turn up to the networking event, but just help. And then go up to them afterwards, he'll recognize you or she'll recognize you and they will talk to you, give you the time. And also that is the person who knows everyone in the room. That person knows everyone worth knowing in that room. Then you can talk to them and say, is there anyone here you think I should meet? Mm. That line will get you to the right person. You're an emerging artist and that person knows who you should meet. That that organizer will go straight through all that traffic of all the people throwing the CDs and get you straight in there with the best person in the room. And that, that was that's one of the best- That's a really good tip. It's one of the best tips I ever got for networking I events. don't think I've ever heard that yeah. before. I think that's a really good one. My one other tip is when you walk through the door, the first person you see will talk to them. Yeah. So you don't get the nerves? Uh, yes, and it creates momentum. Uh, it creates momentum and it creates an energy in the room because yeah. I, I hate them, so I needed these tips. Mm-hmm. But it really helps because you talk to the first person in the room, chat to them, you see someone on their own walking past, pull them in mm-hmm. and then introduce them, get everyone talking. Maybe they get in a conversation, you peel off and go mm-hmm. and talk to someone else. So that was the second tip. But yeah, get to know the person organizing it and talk to the first person in the room. That's a great place to end up. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, and if you did, make sure to leave us a review because we I don't think we've got any of those yet. No. <laughs> um, so make sure you leave a review. Let us know what you think of it on our Instagram as well. Feel free to DM us. Uh, and we'll be back soon with another one. Yeah, yeah.